Hi, my name is Subwood and today we are going to take a closer look at the new version of the ASUS ROG Flow X13, which in this case comes with a RTX 3050 Ti, uh, 35 watt version, so it's kind of a Max-Q version of this GPU. It's supported by the incredible Ryzen 9 5900HS, which is a super fast 7 nanometer, 8 core and 16 thread CPU. Now, this model here comes with 16 gigabytes of very fast 4200 MHz DDR4X RAM, which in this model cannot be expanded. There is a 32 gigabyte version, but as far as I'm aware, that comes with the GTX 1650 yet instead of the 3050 Ti. The built-in NVMe SSD has a capacity of one terabyte, a writing speed of up to 2000 megabytes per second and a reading speed of around up to 2400 megabytes per second. The glossy 13-inch IPS display certainly is a highlight despite its size as it comes with a 120 Hz screen which has an average brightness of 330 nits a sRGB coverage of 100% and an Adobe coverage of 75%. The response time seems to be a bit slow though. Oh, and since this is a convertible, it's also a touchscreen and it has stylus support. Oh, and by the way, it can easily be opened with one hand. Yay! When closed, the laptop is only 1.6 centimeters high and weighs only 1.3 kilogram or 2.9 pounds. I mean, this guy is tiny. It's basically the size of a A4 sheet of paper. Now the case is made out of a mix of magnesium, aluminum and plastic. It looks and feels modern, in my opinion. It's nice and stable, but it catches fingerprints pretty easily. The connections are pretty basic because we only get a USB-C with display support and a USB 3.2 connection on the right side, as well as HDMI 2.0B and a headphone jack on the left side. But then there is also this special ROG XG mobile interface, which allows you to plug in a device which holds a dedicated mobile GPU up to the RTX 3080. And it also has a few more USB and display ports as well as a LAN connection and an SD card reader. But I was trying to find a price for this separate unit and in Germany it seems as if it's not separately available yet. The illuminated keyboard is actually pretty neat and I was able to achieve my fastest writing speed after a few minutes. The touchpad is also pretty good with a quick response and a nice clicking feel. The fingerprint sensor is built into the power button and it worked well most of the time, but not every time. But that somehow is the case for most fingerprint sensors with my fingers on laptops that I'm using. And I wonder if something is wrong with my finger... <laughs> that tickles. By the way, this is what the integrated camera looks like and what the integrated microphone sounds like. Now the 62 watt hour battery allowed me to play Red Dead Redemption mobile for around mm, 85 to 90 minutes, which is not half bad in my opinion. And the performance drop when not plugged in is not as big as for bigger laptops. So I got around 35 FPS stable on medium settings, which is nothing I would complain about for such a tiny laptop on battery. When plugged in playing Red Dead Redemption 2, the laptop was getting around 90 watts from the wall and the battery is not discharging even after long gaming sessions. Now the speakers, they don't get very loud, but they clearly have more bass than I was expecting. Definitely above average for such a small and thin ultrabook. Talking about loudness, I was testing everything that I did with the Asus Turbo mode, resulting in quite some fan noise of around 38 dB, which is not extremely loud for a gaming netbook, but then again, it's an ultrabook and um, using more silent profiles results in um, less noise but some performance loss. But for lighter games and capping the FPS you could surely play with much less noise. Now when watching YouTube with a brightness of 50% using headphones and the loudness of 20% I was getting around 6 hours of battery time which is not terrible I guess. By the way the small 100 watt PSU 
um, charge the laptop for around 50% in about 30 minutes. Okay, now the Ryzen 9 in this thing is incredible. With only 35 watt, it scored 2050 points in Cinebench R15 on multi-core and 238 points in the single core benchmark. On battery mode, the multi-core score was a bit lower with 1744 points and almost the same for the single core performance with 231 points. In Cinebench R23, it scored 12,345 points in the multi-core test and 1,482 in the single core benchmark. On battery, it scored 10,447 for the multi-core and almost identical 1,463 on the single core test. In PC Mark 10, it scored 6,127 when plugged in and 4,544 in battery mode. By the way, for all the benchmarks that I made for this video, I opened the laptop to 180 degrees because this would allow for a better air output for two of the three outtakes over here. And that way I was gaining around 5 to 10% in performance. So keep that in mind. You can see now the vents are open and if you have them like this, there's not much air going on and the laptop also relies on uh, some air beneath it. Alternatively, inside of the very nicely designed um, box, you can find a small cardboard laptop stand that helps to improve the air intake a bit. Now, before we take a look at some gaming benchmarks, be aware that I'm going to make a dedicated benchmark video for this laptop with much, a bit of much bigger list of titles. So check that out afterwards if you are interested. I will put a link in the descriptions and maybe the end card as well. Okay, first up, let me show you this graph where I point out how small the performance loss actually is when the laptop is unplugged and on battery mode. In Far Cry 5 on high settings, it only dropped from 79 FPS to 66 FPS, which is a reduction of only 16.4%. In Rainbow Six Siege, it only dropped from 164 FPS to 144 FPS, which is a reduction of 12%. In Forza Horizon 4, it dropped from 66 to 58 FPS, a reduction of 12% again. And in Horizon Zero Dawn, it dropped from 68 FPS to 58 FPS, a reduction of 14%. So on average, the performance loss was only around 13 to 14%. This is actually pretty impressive and shows how energy efficient the 35W version of the RTX 3050 Ti and the Ryzen 9 can get. I was also testing the laptop plugged in running the silent mode which seemed to cap the FPS to 60 and lower the performance lower than performance mode and unplugging the laptop. So using the silent mode and unplugging the laptop would probably allow for longer battery times. By the way, this laptop has the ability to use Nvidia Dynamic Boost which can give the GPU an extra 5 watt in which case if the CPU has some power to spare to boost the GPU but it sometimes didn't work as intended, or at least I think it didn't. By the way, please note that the display's original native resolution is 1920 by 1200, but I was recording and testing all games with Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080p. For CSGO, I've tested both high and low settings. On high, I saw an average of 162 with a good 1% low of 73 FPS. With low settings, the laptop scored an average of 240 FPS with a great 1% low of 133 FPS. But then again, CSGO runs on potatoes, so nothing special here. But you can definitely make use of that fast 120Hz screen. In Overwatch, I was using high settings and saw a great average of 138 FPS with a 1% low of 92 FPS, delivering a perfect experience on this machine. Absolutely no complaints here, it was kinda made for that kind of stuff, so enjoy yourself. Thanks to the amazing CPU in NO 1800, I was getting an average of 50 FPS on high settings with a 1% low of 18. And of course those numbers are also highly depend on the size of your cities and whether you test it on small islands, the Arctic or your capital. So take those numbers with a grain of salt, 
but it's definitely playable and enjoyable and still looking great. For GTA 5 I was using my standard high settings mix and saw an average of 85 FPS with a 1% low of 61 FPS. I guess a lot of you will be playing that title as it was a gift from the Epic Store and the online mode is still so popular. Absolutely smooth and enjoyable, no problems here. Now who is this laptop for? Would I recommend it? Well, this is probably the world's smallest gaming laptop of its class, clearly. And the main reason to get it is that you actually really need a super small and super mobile laptop for mobility reasons and you want to still be able to have some decent um, gaming sessions on the go with quite some performance. Because price to performance wise there are certainly much better options with 15 inch or 17 inch screens out there. Then again the optional but heavily expensive Asus ROG XG connection allows for a very expensive upgrade with an RTX 37 or RTX 3080 mobile. In Germany this model costs 1800 euros so this will be around I guess 1600 to 1800 dollars in the US and probably even more in some other countries. So this is clearly not targeting budget gamers. The build quality and the display are really good and I would recommend the laptop for content creators due to the great CPU which is really amazing for Adobe products and the great screen with stylus and touchscreen capabilities. In my opinion the RTX 3050 Ti with 35 watt makes perfect sense for a laptop like this despite its small 4GB VRAM size because there is no other GPU with 35 watts that can deliver such performance yet. I really wonder if other manufacturers will pick that up and make budget ultra gaming books like an Asus Rift 3 with the RTX 3015 Ti 35 watt for let's say less than $1000 for example. Hi Acer! That's all for today. If you like the content please consider to subscribe to the channel like the video, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and cheers.